Hello students, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll discuss the third passage of the reading section of the May 2021 US SAT. Let's begin. This passage is adapted from Matthew Sivoka. The oceans are full of plastic, but why do seabirds eat it? Pioneering research by Dr. Thomas Krupp Jr. in the early 1970s showed that tube-nosed seabirds use their powerful sense of smell or olfaction to find food effectively, even when heavy fog obscures their vision. Two decades later, Dr. Gabriel Nevitt and colleagues found that certain species of tube-nosed seabirds are attracted to dimethyl sulfide, DMS, a natural scented sulfur compound. DMS comes from marine algae, which produce a related chemical called DMSP inside their cells. When those cells are damaged, for example, when algae die or when marine grazers like krill eat it, DMSP breaks down, producing DMS. The smell of DMS alerts seabirds that food is nearby, not the algae, but the krill that are consuming the algae. So this uh, paragraph sets up the food cycle of uh, tube-nosed seabirds, which use their powerful sense of smell uh, to detect food. And here, the compound that we are talking about is dimethyl sulfide, DMS, which is released um, when algae die. And uh, the breakdown of a related compound, DMSP, alerts uh, the seabirds to the presence of krill that consume the algae. Dr. Nevitt and I wondered whether these seabirds were being tricked into consuming marine plastic debris because of the way it smelled. To test this idea, my co-authors and I created a database collecting every study we could find that recorded plastic ingestion by tube-nosed seabirds over the past 50 years. This database contained information from over 20,000 birds of more than 70 species. It showed that species of birds that use DMS as a foraging cue eat plastic nearly six times as frequently as species that are not attracted to the smell of DMS while foraging. So um, the problem of seabirds consuming marine plastic was sought to be tested by the authors of the study. And they felt that the, uh, the compound DMS might explain some of this ingestion of marine plastic. And when they studied, they found that indeed species of birds that use DMS as a foraging cue uh, tended to eat plastic six times as frequently as species that do not use DMS as a cue. To further test our theory, we needed to analyze how marine plastic debris smells. To do so, I took beads of the three most common types of floating plastic, polypropylene and low and high density polyethylene, and sewed them inside custom mesh bags, which we attached to two boys of, of California's central coast. We hypothesized that algae would coat the plastic at sea, a process known as biofouling and produce DMS. After the plastic had been immersed for about a month at sea, I retrieved it and brought it to a lab that is not usually a stop for marine scientists, the Robert Mondovi Institute for Food and Wine Science at UC Davis. There we used a gas chromatograph specifically built to detect sulfur odors in food products to measure the chemical signature of our experimental marine debris. Sulfur compounds have a very distinct odor. To humans, they smell like rotten eggs or decaying seaweed on the beach. But to some species of sea birds, DMS smells delicious. So this sets up the experiment, right? To test their theory, what the scientists did was uh, they took uh, beads of the most common type of floating plastic and they sewed them inside custom mesh bags, which they then uh, threw into the sea. Um, and then we, they brought that back. Uh, they brought that back outside um, after a month to test for DMS. Sure enough, every sample of plastic we collected was coated with algae and had substantial amounts of DMS associated with it. We found levels of DMS that were higher than normal background concentrations in the environment and well above levels that tube-nose seabirds can detect and use to find food. 
These results provide the first evidence that in addition to looking like food, plastic debris may also confuse seabirds that hunt by smell. Our findings have important implications. First, they suggest that plastic debris may be a more insidious threat to marine life than we previously believed. If plastic looks and smells like food, it is more likely to be mistaken for prey than if it just looks like food. Right? So it's not just that marine plastic looks like food, it can also smell like food um, because uh, of the DMS associated with it. And that is a big threat. Second, we found through data analysis that small secretive burrow nesting seabirds such as prions, storm petrels, and shear waters are more likely to confuse plastic for food than their more charismatic surface nesting relatives such as albatrosses. This difference matters because populations of hard to observe burrow nesting seabirds are more difficult to count than surface nesting sea species, so they are often not surveyed as closely. Therefore, we recommend increased monitoring of these less charismatic species that may be at greater risk of plastic ingestion. So this is the second implication from the study. One implication is the broad implication of how marine plastic is a serious threat to seabirds. And the second is this kind of subgroup within seabirds, uh, the burrow nesting seabirds, which um, you know, which are more likely to confuse plastic for food uh, than the surface dwelling ones, right? And that is a specific threat to these creatures. Okay, the figure we will look at later. Question 21. According to the passage, the ability to detect DMS is useful to seabirds because DMS suggests the presence of large amounts of plastic debris facilitates seabirds' ability to navigate in heavy fog, indicates the concentrations of algae are especially high, signals to seabirds that populations of krill are nearby. So it's D, right? Because we know that uh, the smell of DMS alerts seabirds that food is nearby, not the algae, but the krill that consume the algae. So that's the food that they are looking for. As used in line 22, contained most nearly means. So this is the word. This database contained information from over 20,000 birds. So this database included information. To contain information is to include information. It's not about controlling, limiting, or accommodating information, right? 23, it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that prior to the studies conducted by the author and Nevitt, research on tube nose seabirds must have identified the minimum DMS level that tube nose seabirds can smell, minimum DMS level that can result from biofouling, maximum amount of algae that can coat a plastic surface, maximum amount of plastic that can be safely consumed by a tube nose seabird. Okay, so let's work with the options here, lines 41 to 44, 41 to 44, 48 to 50, uh, so till here, 48 to 50 is here, um, 50 to 53 and 54 to 56, 50 to 50, uh, 3 and 54 to 56. Okay, and what we are looking for, that before the studies conducted by the author, research on tube no seabirds must have identified what? Okay. Um, there we used a gas chromatograph um, specifically built to detect, detect sulfur odors in food products to measure the chemical signature of our experimental marine debris. So, um, okay, fine. Sure enough, every sample of plastic we collected was coated with algae and had substantial amounts of DMS associated with it. We found levels of DMS that were higher than normal background concentrations in the environment and well above levels that tube nose seabirds can detect and use to find food. So this is where I know that there were there was a sense of how much tube nose seabirds can detect and find food DMS levels. So 
maximum uh, amount of algae. Yeah, so it will be A, minimum DMS level that tube nose seabirds can smell. So this is, we found levels that were higher than normal and well above levels that tube nose detect can. Yeah, so it was minimum DMS levels that tube nose seabirds can smell. This was known. And the answer is 50 to 53. Uh, yeah, the levels were much higher. Okay. According to the author, the research he did with Nevit is valuable because the results indicate that seabirds only recently acquired the ability to identify food through the use of olfaction as a foraging cue. The scientific community may have underestimated the danger plastic poses to seabirds. Some populations of surface nesting seabirds are declining. The process by which plastic becomes biofouled may be reversible with the right treatment. So I think it's B, right? Is this evidence-based? Uh, no, it is B because we know that our findings suggest that plastic debris may be a more insidious threat than we previously believed. So scientists may have underestimated the danger plastic poses to seabirds. Which choice best supports the conclusion that a factor other than the presence of DMS can mislead seabirds into consuming plastic? Um, factor other than the presence can mislead. Okay, 60 to 62, 63 to 68. Okay, so 60 to 62, 63 to 68. Okay. 68 to 72 and 72 to 74. 68 to 72 and 72 to 74. Okay. If plastic looks and smells like food, it is more likely to be mistaken for prey um, other than DMS. Okay. Such as prions, storm petrels are more likely. So it's about... Um, So it's not a DMS alone, right? It is also the, the look, the other than the presence of DMS. So it's also how it looks. If plastic looks and smells like food, it is more likely to be mistaken for prey than it is if it just looks like food. So looks, looking, the looks of food can also mislead birds. So that is the best answer. The next paragraph is basically about a subsection, which is at greater danger because of its burrowing um, nature. But the answer here is A. The author's discussion of burrow nesting seabirds primarily serves to answer a question raised earlier in the passage about why seabirds consume debris, present contributions from other scientists doing similar research on seabirds, Describe a new design for future research into the feeding habits of seabirds. Support a claim that certain types of seabirds should be observed with more scrutiny. So the purpose is obviously D, that certain kind of seabirds should be observed with greater scrutiny because the fact that they are burrow nesting and the fact that they could be consuming marine plastic could result in uh, them getting uh, eliminated from survey data, right? So D. As used in line 71, surveyed most nearly means. So uh, this is the word, surveyed. Um, burrow nesting seabirds are more difficult to count than surface nesting seabirds. So they often are not surveyed as closely. They are not uh, surveyed in this sense would be counted, right? because we're talking about populations, right? So they're not counted as closely um, tracked, right? Because you're going to track them. You're going to kind of see how many of them are there. It's not about judging or exploring them. And it's not about polling, right? Poll is not the correct word in this context. Which statement about the data presented in figure one is best supported by the passage? Okay, so uh, let's just look at figure one then. So mean DMS concentrations, uh, high density, low density, and polypropylene, 13.45 boy overall location. 
Okay. Um, okay, let's read the options. Concentrations of DMS on the polypropylene debris would have been highest at the end of the one month period in both boy locations uh, per gram plastic. Okay. Uh, surface nesting seabirds would likely have spent more time foraging near boy location two than they would have spent foraging near boy location one. Location two. Uh, we are looking at three kinds of plastic, right? Floating plastic. Yeah. And DMS is... Uh -huh. Right. So, okay. Option C, the sulfur odor of the polypropylene debris at boy location would have been stronger than the sulfur of the, of the low density polyethylene debris at that location. Okay. Okay, so it's a, it's a, yeah, so it's basically a measure of sulfur odor, right? Uh, sulfur compounds have a very distinct odor. Okay, so what is option C saying? Sulfur odor of the propylene debris at one would have been stronger than the sulfur odor of the low density polyethylene. So low, the polypropene and so that's not true, right? Uh, sulfur odor for low density is stronger. Huh. So C is not correct. DMS sensitive seabirds foraging near boy location two would have been more likely to seek out the polypropylene debris than the high density. Okay, so more likely to polypropylene than high density. More likely to seek out this than high density. Yeah, that is correct because the DMS concentration at, of polypropylene is higher than that for high density. And so the sulfur smell would be greater and that is why DMS sensitive. So D is the best answer. According to figure two, what is the approximate mean percentage of seabirds found eating plastic debris uh, or that use DMS as a foraging cube? Okay. So use DMS as a foraging cue, mean percentage of B. Okay, so uh, that is 50%, right? Uh, what is the approximate mean percentage? Yeah, so 50%, option C. According to figure one, which boy location and type of plastic had the highest concentration of DMS? Uh, okay. Highest concentration is polypropylene boy location two because it's 14.13. Uh, polypropylene boy location two, option D. Okay, right. So those were the questions 21 to 31. So let's grade it. Uh, yeah. 21 to 31, okay. Uh, D A A C D A A C Okay uh, 25 B A D C B A D C 28 D C D D C D Okay so we got all correct hope this was useful uh, hit like and subscribe to the channel Make sure you check out the solutions for the history and the literature passage of this section, which I've uploaded before this video. I'll be uploading the solutions to the next two passages soon. So I hope to see you in those videos as well. Take care. Bye-bye.